welcome to the pre-market rundown we do these live sessions every single day monday through friday from 8 30 to 9 30 to get you guys prepared for the trading session i give you guys my complete overview and analysis on the spy the cues my top penny stocks and top option plays for today so you guys know exactly how i'm looking to come to the market how i'm looking to navigate this market and how i'm looking to make money in this market and if you've been here this week you would already know how valuable these streams are not just valuable as far as education but the information the analysis the game plans just go back and look at yesterday's stream and compare our analysis to what happened yesterday on the spy the cues and tesla and i gave you those three game plans yesterday with full breakdowns with the education to back them up as well so not only will you get a lot of education here tons of value tons of insight but you'll get my game plans as well so that you can come in strategically prepared and execute and possibly be able to make money in the market right so definitely be here every single morning i love doing these sessions love having you guys here and again good morning on youtube make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell and like this stream as well so good morning everybody inside of chat zach the sizzler what's up william kevin stir good morning trader adam mr johnny holmes susan william chelsea kevin everybody is here ready to rock and roll this market has been on fire this week and you guys have been on fire as well josie scott v good morning and then over on youtube how we all doing coffee steve k brent miller lewis tom e gan i always i always butcher your username man but i like doing it uh sean scott austin damn drew good morning we got georgia in the house pennsylvania maryland there we go philadelphia love it good old texas digging it digging it awesome well again welcome to the pre-market rundown show where all of your dreams will come true welcome my name is josh your host and we're gonna dive into it do, 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 do. all right guys so let's dive into what we got going on all right so this morning we had non-farm payroll data okay i was getting a lot of questions last night josh what's your outlook for tomorrow i'm like i don't know until we get data they're like what do you mean i'm like well right now we've been grinding some support this week above the 200 sma from a technical perspective we could bounce but if we have bad data tomorrow that could completely change my outlook so i'll give you guys my outlook tomorrow morning and if i would have given you my outlook last night obviously i need to now change my outlook today because non-farm payroll data dropped and it was not good and the market's down five points at this point in time that's a very big drop that quick so what is non-farm payroll data guys well number one it's of high importance data it's like cpi ppi data you know jolts that we had on tuesday it's data that will absolutely affect and move the market but let's really dive deep into non-farm payrolls non-farm payrolls is an employment report released monthly usually on the first friday of every month and heavily affects the u.s dollar the bond market and the stock market current employment statistics ces program for the u.s department of labor bureau and labor statistics surveys about 141,000 businesses and government agencies representing approximately 486,000 individual work sites in order to provide detailed industry data on employment hours and earnings of workers on non-farm payroll and you can see here that this morning we were forecasted to come in at 170,000, 170k. Our previous read was 227. So we were forecasting to come under our prior reading. We came in higher than the forecast, nearly double and higher than the previous read at 336 this morning. And look at the spy. Market did not like that data whatsoever. Just like Jolts Tuesday at 10 a.m a lot higher than expectations market didn't like it market dropped so we know why the market just dumped five points but i'm sure the big question that everybody has right now is josh does this mean i should short the market does this mean at 9 30 i should go all in on yolo puts should i short the market today well it depends it still just comes down to the technicals it comes down to where can the market go could the market reverse do we see a reversal is there a reason to get long today or do we need to be waiting for bounces gauge the bounce how weak or strong the bounce is and then look for some nice lower highs to get short on and play some momentum to the downside right we don't understand truly right now until we dive into the technicals what the highest probable outcome of today is can we see a good long day right couldn't we see buyers step back in 
or are we going to see sellers continue to, you know, control the market and continue to drive the market down today? I can't say how many times we've had, say, CPI or PPI data, where the data drops, we get a massive drop, and then we do end higher by the end of the day, or vice versa. CPI data, PPI data drops, we get a big pop, and we fade all day. So just because we have not so great data, just because the market dropped five points doesn't necessarily mean, right, it's going to continue lower it could pop and bounce today. So we need to take a deep dive into the technicals and get a really good clear idea on where can the market go. And then from there, when the market opens, wait for the market to come to us, to set up, to provide opportunity. And then we simply attack it at that point in time. So let's take a deep dive into the SPY and I'm gonna go ahead and clear my chart altogether. And we're gonna start fresh together, right? So you guys can actually see how I'm identifying certain levels and zones. So you guys can learn as well. Okay, instead of just giving them to you. So first thing I wanna do is look at all of these weekly lows that we've had here, right? We've come down Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and we've bounced, 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 right? Pretty darn close to that psychological 420, right? We came down Tuesday pretty close to that 420, came down to like 42020, we bounced, and we've been stair-stepping the last couple of days. Each daily low has been slightly higher over the past couple of days. Well, obviously, we just cracked that slight little uptrend that we had, right? If you look at those daily higher lows, you can see that we had a slight little uptrend. We were stair-stepping, 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 right? Guess what? Well, we just made a little bit of a lower low, okay? So we can definitely start to see the next leg down. It's possible. But here's the thing. We do need to identify this zone of support off of these three daily lows. So here's your first zone between 4.20.18 and 421.18. I'm just drawing this zone off Tuesday's low of day up into yesterday's low of day to give us an area where the stock could hold on up as support, okay? But we wanna do even more TA and even more due diligence to really dial this zone in, all right? And so the other thing I wanted to do is, right, draw that uptrend, because this was a valid uptrend over the past few days. And so what do we know about trend lines, okay? When we have an uptrend and we're above a trend line, making higher lows and higher highs, it's considered to be bullish, right? But when we crack an uptrend, it's considered to be now bearish. Uh, that's, a, that's supposed to be a B, bearish, okay? So we know we just went from the bullish side to the bearish side of this trend line. And we do know that when trend lines crack, they do sometimes like to be retested from the under, underneath side as resistance. Okay, so I'm curious to see, like, is this trend line going to be respected today as resistance at some point? That would put you right around like 422, okay? But I want an extra layer of confluence if we even have an extra layer of confluence. The last thing that I want to do is just try and nail an entry to the short side off of a trend line retest, right? It's not a high probability setup. I need multiple reasons to be looking for trades, right? Multiple layers of confluence and right here we can all agree that there was a lot of prior support at this zone that we're identifying right now between 421.85 and 422 right we can look over the past you know few days actually and see that this area has been respected several times let's go back to tuesday right tons of resistance then it turns support back into resistance pre-market resistance, pre-market support, okay? It's actually where we opened and had a quick little low of day before that nice little pop on Wednesday. Cracked below it, retested it as resistance, got above it, hit it as support, okay? So now we're validating this level a lot more than what it was before we even drew it in the first place. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight valid points. Look at that price action here on yesterday at that zone. Beautiful price action at that zone. So we can see that this is gonna be a pretty solid zone of support or resistance. Well, right now it's absolutely going to be resistance because we're actually below that zone. Okay, and again, that zone here is gonna be between 421.85 and 422, okay? That actually gives us a second layer of confluence at a trend line retest, right? That trend line that we just cracked, right? That trend line that we just cracked here, if we come back up 
and retest prior uptrend support as trendline resistance that's going to put you right back in that zone as well of resistance so that gives you two layers of confluence here on the spy do we have anything else well what we can do is grab a fibonacci extension from that drop high down to that drop low and then just simply drag it back up right now we have a couple fib levels that we could utilize as levels of resistance along this retracement back into resistance back into a trend line retest maybe we get a solid 618 retracement as well now it comes down to price action volume how are we looking at this zone how are we looking at this area and if it looks good to the short side that's going to be a nice low risk high reward area to get short at okay so right now i see a good deal of resistance right around this 422. so i'm going to say right now 422 is going to be your current line in the sand right that's your make or break okay if we stay below that level of resistance we can go lower we'll figure out how much lower we can go but i would be looking to play puts if we're trading below 422. okay but what if we see that trend line regain right what if we just go bloop, like that back above that zone of resistance back above that trend line and we actually see that level regain a little something like this well that's a break and retest we're regaining that trend line it could absolutely hold it to support at that point in time that would give us long confirmation to play the spy long so you can see that whatever happens at that trend line and whatever happens at that zone is going to be a make or break for the spy we stay below it we play puts get above it stay above it we play calls it is your line in the sand okay and let's go ahead and gauge some overhead targets of resistance if we do get long today let's go ahead and gauge some lower targets as support if we get short today off that line in the sand so what i'm going to do is just go back down into that low from Tuesday and we can see that we have quite a few touch points on the daily right at this zone resistance 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 support here Tuesday support here Wednesday that zone between 420 20 and 420 77 is going to be the next lower zone of support which we're sitting in right now so if we come up into that zone of resistance into the trend line and we get short right we have about what would that be about a dollar 50 maybe two dollars of downside potential on the spy okay then if we fall below that zone the next area that i see the spy getting to is the 200 day moving average right so i would say it's going to be somewhere between the 200 sma is going to be the next best area of support and then 420 right because 420 is a whole number it's a psychological level of support so the lowest level of support to even see a reversal to even catch a bounce today is going to be between the 200 sma and then that 420 level okay that's like the lowest you want to see the spy go if you're looking for a bounce or whatever the case is uh, but if we crack those two levels we could absolutely move lower the next area that i'm seeing here on the spy would be down towards around uh 417 70 here on the spy if we do see a continuation to the downside today but the, at least that gives us a few areas to the downside as far as you know potential support right if we get sure off resistance we're going to be looking to cover around areas of support those are going to be our price targets so we know that this lower zone is a price target we know the 200 sma is a price target because these are daily support levels and then we know if we fall below those two zones we can get all the way down into the 417s that's a pretty big drop from where we were at just here in pre-market okay but you always need to have an opposite plan in place just in case I, I preach this all the time please do not come into the market so biased to the short side or to the long side that you miss clear opportunity I've come into the market like I'm short in the market today the market's going down and I'm just looking for short opportunity meanwhile the market's not giving me short opportunity and it just grinds all day and I take unnecessary losses come in 50 50 neutral and have the mindset of I don't care where the market goes today I don't care if it shoots up 10 points I don't care if the market goes down 10 points I want to make sure I'm on the right side of the trade and I capitalize on that potential 10 points so come in neutral 50 50. you're not a bull you're not a bear you're a good trader so have a short plan in place and then have a long plan in place just in case and so what's the long plan 
Well, the long plane is if the SPY is able to regain that zone of support and that uptrend. That would look pretty bullish. We would look to play some calls. Where to? Right back into the daily time frame. I would actually start mapping out all of this support resistance we've had over the past couple of weeks. Right? We came down and put in that daily double bottom here last week in that zone. And then we've been topping out in the zone the past couple of days. And so that overhead zone of resistance here is going to be up between 424.89 and 425.42. So that would be an area that we could get to today on the SPY if we do have reasoning to get long. Okay. So why is the market dumping non-farm payrolls? What's our line in the sand? We've discussed it. Overhead resistance, lower support right? A couple different game plans, a couple of different ideas as far as what we can see the market do today. And if the market does one of those things, we know how to execute. We know how to attack the market. We know how to make money. And that's exactly what we did yesterday. Below 425, that zone of resistance. I want to be short down to the low 420s. That was yesterday's session. What happened? We got down to the low 420s. So again, today, your line in the sand is this trend line, is this zone of resistance between 421.85 and 422. We get above it, stay above it. We can play calls on up to 425. We come on up and retest it and can't get above it. We're looking to play puts for the leg on down. Do we have any questions whatsoever before we dive into the cues? Anything about the spy, the analysis, the game plan, the zones, the levels? Want to make sure that you guys are all set ready to rock and roll. So the cool thing on YouTube is at least you can see the visual representation and I'm very, very thorough with the zones, the levels, the trend lines. So if you are looking at your charts, you have an opportunity to go ahead and mark up these levels, mark up these zones and really get prepared with the analysis and the game plan. And you still have the visual representation as well. So any questions? Give you guys like a minute. Questions about the spy? Let me know. We'll dive into it, guys. Bueller, Bueller. Just making sure before we move on. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the Qs. Let's get you guys some analysis here on QQQ. I mean, we just fell below every single zone of resistance that we had from yesterday. So let's mark up these two overhead zones. Let's keep this zone right here on the Qs. It's between 355.17 and 355.72. Then what we want to do is mark up this zone down here against these lows. It's a tight zone. Pretty much the same price. That's between 353.20 and 353.29. Right off September 26th low of day last Tuesday, last Thursday's low of day, and then this Tuesday's low of day. And then down towards around last Wednesday's low of day. These are going to be some lower levels here on the queues. So where are we at right now? We're still above a couple of these levels. We're going to have some support coming on up between this 353.20 in 353.29 it's gonna be a decent little level of support and then the lowest level of support today is 351.37 that is gonna be last wednesday's low of day where is resistance right now well we have this overhead zone of resistance here on qqq between 355.17 and 355.72 that is your overhead zone of resistance and we actually just saw the crack the retest and now we're dropping lower so this is your key zone of resistance today here on QQQ, all right? If we stay below this zone, we're looking to play puts all the way down into the low 350s. 
However, if we ever see the cues for some reason snap back above that zone, pull back into it and hold it, then we'll be looking to play some calls up towards around the high 359s, right? Back into these highs from yesterday and all of this resistance here in pre-market, the high 359s, they're on QQQ. So what's going to be your like line in the sand on the cues? I would say the line in the sand is going to be that zone between 355.17 and 355.72, right? We stay below that zone. We have room down to this lower zone right around 353.20. We fall below that zone. We have room all the way down to last Wednesday's low of day of 351.37, right? But if we get back above that zone and hold that zone as support, let's just go ahead and look left. Where could we see QQQ go next? I would say start looking left, mark up some of yesterday's highs, and those would be some overhead targets here on the Qs, okay? I'm primarily just going to be watching the SPY today. I always like to give you the Q analysis, but I primarily watch the SPY every single day, trade the SPY every single day, right? And location-wise, the SPY looks fantastic, right? You just came down pretty darn close to that 200 SMA. So today's going to be a big make or break day for the SPY, in my opinion. This is going to set the tone into next week, right? If we come down below and close below that 200 SMA, things can get very interesting next week. But if we're able to hold the 200 SMA today with some strength, we may see a bit of a bounce. I understand the market probably won't bounce. The data was horrendous, but at the end of the day, if we see a bounce, we see a bounce. And if that's where the opportunity is, we need to be on the right side of the trade. So there's a lot of support down here between the 200 SMA, 420 psychological support, and then that lower zone as well. There is a lot of support and it's very possible we see the SPY hold on up today and have a decent bounce. But if we crack all of this strong support, it will turn into strong resistance. And that's when we could see the SPY obviously go even lower. And again, how much lower could we see the SPY go? Well, I'm looking to see if the SPY, you know, what my zone's gonna be is this zone right here between 41694 and 417.67 would be the next lower zone of support that I have to the downside here on the SPY. So if we crack below this zone in the 200 SMA, right, and we stay below those two levels, then hey, we have room again down into the 417s today, guys. So today's gonna be a fun day. Today's gonna be a very interesting day and there should be a lot of opportunity. But again, just because the market's dumping, don't get too thrilled, don't get too excited. It's okay to be energetic and lively and you know, be, be excited, but don't let that bleed into your trading to where you're chasing stocks and you're, you're not getting positioned correctly and you're being too aggressive. Still be calm, cool, collected, wait for the market to come to you, right? Be serious, be disciplined, be patient and take only the best of the best trades and end your week strong and profitable. There's gonna be opportunity today. I love this volatility, love it. Yeah, so we had non-farm payroll data, Catherine. So here's the cool thing, who took the Tesla puts yesterday for the swing trade? You're currently up 10 points, 10 points on those Tesla puts. Catherine, I know this was a trade idea that you had from Wednesday, right? And you got confirmation yesterday for Tesla puts off that potential head and shoulders. And you're going to be sitting pretty well today if you took that Tesla trade. Uh, you took the, uh, the Tesla puts and you're still in. Congratulations. Love it. Joe took some Tesla puts. Absolutely love it. And you guys are still holding. That's insane. I love it, guys. Well done. Well done. Killer trade. Great setup. And hopefully you guys understand why that was such a good high probability trade. So as long as you understand why, hey, make all the money, baby. Make all the money. I love it. Good stuff, guys. Uh, so here's a really good question from YouTube. So how long do you wait to make a trade after the market open? I don't have any time horizon. It's like I have to wait 15 minutes. I have to wait 30 minutes. I don't have any rules. My thing is, if we don't have a trade at a key zone at the start of the day, I'm hands off. So for example, what day was it? Was it, it was Wednesday. Yeah, it was Wednesday. I'm like, guys, I don't have a line in the sand for you. I'm not looking to take a trade on the SPY right at the start of the day because we're nowhere near any key area of support or resistance. So I waited 15, 30 minutes before I got my first trade on Wednesday. 
Yesterday, I said, hey, guys, this is our line in the sand. If we can't break 425 when we open, I'm getting short. I was short within the first three minutes yesterday off that 425 and took it took it down for a nice little 50, 50 cents to a dollar, down into our weekly hedge pressure level. Uh, so it really depends. If we're sitting at a key area when the market opens and there's a reason to get in, I'll take the trade, right? But if we're in a pretty random area and there's no trading opportunity right at the start of the day, I'll sit back until I see there's a good trading opportunity. You still have 10 contracts? Nice. Love it. I uh, guess who only did a day trade on Tesla and didn't hold anything? It's okay, but you still took the trade, and it was a good day trade, right? It played out beautifully, so congrats. You still got 10 put contracts. I'm really excited and curious to see what your profits are. That's, that's good stuff. Uh, so uh, my Venmo, my PayPal, it's josh at alphadaytrading.com. Something that we're going to start implementing here inside of the community is a 20% profit share on all profits, okay? Josh misses all of his opportunities. He's too busy helping you guys. So anytime you guys make anything more than, you know, 500 bucks, we're just going to do a nice little 20% profit share. You go ahead and cash app that to me, josh at alphadaytrading.com, and we'll be all set ready to rock and roll. <laughs> Joking, obviously. Uh, scrolling up, make sure I didn't miss anything. So, so Johnny Holmes, is there a setting I'm missing on the 200 SMA on the SPY? Mine is around 424.50. It's the red line. What time frame are you looking at? That you know, you're not on a daily boss, man. That's why 200 day moving average on the daily only. 200 day moving average on the daily only. 50 SMA on the daily only. 20 EMA on the daily. You can use it intraday as well. We use EMAs intraday, okay? We use SMAs on the daily. The only EMAs that I would even recommend that you use intraday is a nine and a 20. On the daily, you got the 20 EMA, the 50 SMA, and the 200 SMA. That would probably be why. Yep, you're on the five minute time frame. We're not using those indicators on our intraday time frames. just the daily. That's where they're respected. Okay, so you guys are all set with the SPY. You guys are all set with the cues. Okay, now, what do we really have out there that looks good? Small caps today are garbage. I mean, the last couple of days, penny stocks have been doing well in pre-market today. There wasn't anything moving, guys. I am still flat on the day. I have no trade. That's how slow it was, right? No trade today. I didn't even have a trade yesterday on this account, right? Just no opportunity. Uh, with small caps today small caps nothing popping off nothing happening uh, you got PRZO moving let's go look at it yeah if you guys want to look at some small caps on your watch list let's look at the small caps for sure uh, but I didn't see anything leading up to like 815 um, and that's why PRZO started moving right around 8815 so let's take a deep dive into uh, PRZO real quick and let's get an idea of where we could see this thing go first things first is there a press release uh, they say the partner receives approval to operate drones in populated areas in Australia. All right, cool. So there's a press release here on PRZO. We are going to have overhead resistance between 144 and 152. We can see that we just have a lot of daily support that turned resistance here. So that's going to be a nice little zone of overhead resistance, right? Looking at some of these lows right through here as another area that's going to be between like 110 and 113 and we can see that we had lots of daily support here lots of daily support then we saw it turn resistance before a nice big drop to the downside so that's going to be a, a decent little level here as well between 110 and 113 and then i would just come down to this this low that low that's sitting right there at like 95 cents that's going to be a great area of support because it's also your 20 EMA. So 95 cents is going to be a good level. We have some overhead resistance and some decent targets. Where's PRZO at? PRZO, it's above 95 cents. And now it's hitting that zone of resistance. So here's one of two things that could take place to give you a trade on PRZO. Okay. Number one, get rejected off the zone of resistance, hold back. To that 95 cent level or a dollar right because a dollar could hold so 95 cents to a dollar is going to be your zone of support so that's the plan if it gets rejected here and pulls back 
look for a nice pullback entry between 95 cents and a dollar for the next leg on up okay or if we just break this zone right now right here and retest that zone of support that would give you confirmation to play it long into your next area of resistance between 144 and 152 here on PRZO. Okay, so PRZO is trading pretty good volume. It's trading 12 times its average volume this morning, right? Gonna have a decent little 68% gap up, good press release. And we know one of two things can happen. Rejection, pullback into support for the entry for the next leg up, or we break this resistance level, it turns support, that's a break and retest, and then we simply play it long into our next overhead level of resistance there on PRZO. Uh, Cash says, nada. Yeah, so I didn't see anything. So obviously, I'm still watching Tesla. I was really hoping... Tesla could pop on up a little bit, give me an entry to the short side, because that was a trade that I missed. I was in um, ES shorts, right, at the start of the day yesterday. When I came back and saw Tesla already down three, four points, I can't chase it. I wasn't here yesterday afternoon, so I missed that re-entry when we came back into the gap fill and started to see it top out. If I was here staring at Tesla, I would have been in 100%. But right now, I can't chase it. It's another missed opportunity for Josh, and he has quite a few of those. But I'm happy that you guys are taking these trades. So congratulations, job well done. So I'm just gonna watch Tesla today, maybe into next week, and maybe, who knows, it gets back up into that zone of resistance. Um, and maybe there's, a, maybe there's an opportunity to get in, right? Uh, but right now, I'm pretty much gonna cross this one off as I missed the opportunity. But it's worth watching because I want to help you guys manage the trade if you're in it, right? It was one of my trade ideas. I wanted it myself. You guys took it. So I'm going to help you walk through the trade, manage the trade, and make sure you're taking profit when you should, right? So again, I'll keep an eye on Tesla. I'm still keeping an eye on Netflix off its 200-day moving average. So I am watching Tesla, or I'm not Tesla, Netflix, just to see if it continues to grind this 200 SMA. And if so, we have earnings coming on up and we could see a nice little push uh, into earnings, possibly, right? Possibly, depends on what the overall market does. Uh, but I do wanna watch to see if it can continue to grind this 200 SMA and maybe start to bounce. Kind of like what AMD did. When AMD came down and sat at its 200 SMA for a few days and then we saw a nice little bounce. Looking to see if we can have the same thing take place here on Netflix like we saw with AMD. And so the 200-day moving average is like 370, and right now we're at 368. So it's very possible that we are still above and trading above the 200 SMA, and it's possible we have a short-term swing trade to the long side ahead of earnings on Netflix as it's grinding a very strong support level on the daily. So I will be watching Netflix, okay? And then other than that, guys, that's it for today. Um, we only have the SPY and the Qs primarily on watch. Uh, you got PRZO, that's a penny stock that could move today. Uh, you got AUVI, maybe, TTOO, maybe. I mean, it's not a hot penny stock market whatsoever. Your best bet, guys, is to get laser focused and dialed in on the SPY. There is going to be opportunity to make money today, even just trading the SPY, and that's it. And that's where my focus is going to be, primarily on the SPY. So do we have any questions or any ticker requests? Now's a good time to, again, do a nice little Q&A before market opens, review any stocks that are on your watch list, make sure that you guys are prepared and just give me the opportunity to uh, you know, help you guys out. And if you guys want the full interactive live stream, just go ahead and come on over to YouTube. The links are in the bio, or just go to YouTube, type in Alpha Day Trading. If you guys are enjoying the stream, if you find the stream to be valuable, it really means a lot to help support the stream. So like it. Let's get those likes to like 10K, 15K. It really does mean a lot. Helps us out. And then share the stream as well. It really does help get this stream in front of everybody else that would find value in it as well. So appreciate you guys. Appreciate the support, and it means everything. Uh, have I ever traded shares of an inverse ETF such as SQQQ, for example? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Uh, 
Uh, Ethan, uh, wanting to take a look at Apple. Let's go take a look at Apple real quick, boss. We can clearly see we're going to have some support right through this zone. I mean, not necessarily support, but that's a zone, right? That's going to be a pretty solid zone here on Apple. I mean, look at that. High a day, gap up, low of day and open, support, support, support. Just here over the past three days, four days, a lot of support between this zone. Uh, that zone is between 170.83 and 171.08, okay? So that's going to be our first area that really stands out to us. Then we're going to go down into this low of day and then that candle open. So that's going to be our next zone between 169.05 and 169.33. And then we're going to grab all of these highs into yesterday's low of day. And that's going to create this zone between 172.68 and 173.07 three high probability key zones on apple where are we at right now we are sitting at yesterday's low of day that's your line in the sand that's your make or break on apple where could we see apple bounce to if we do bounce today i would say you do have a lot of this you know potential overhead resistance look at that Look at all of that resistance. You got low of day, low of day, close, high of day, close. Yesterday's open. So that zone right there is between 173.55 and 173.78. That's going to be a pretty good overhead zone of resistance. And you can see we're tapping it right now. So we're, we're stuck in between two zones. That's, that's it. We're really tight in between these two zones, right? Overhead resistance, lower support. We need to make a decision on direction with Apple. Okay, so here's the game plan. If Apple can get above this upper zone and stay above it, you could simply look to play some calls today. Okay, if we get rejected at this zone and eventually fall below this lower zone, then you're looking to play some puts down towards around 171 today here on Apple. Okay, so you just got to make a decision either above this zone, hold support to get confirmation to play calls, or get a crack and then stay below this lower zone as resistance to get confirmation to play puts. If you see one of these two things take place, you should have a really nice trade right around the corner. That would give you, you know, good risk to reward. It'd be a nice high probability setup. You're being patient to wait for one of these two zones to break, okay? While it's inside of these two zones, you're gonna be more or less range bound. You're gonna be just tapping these two zones. And if this is all you see all day, those aren't going to be really good trading conditions, okay? So you need to really see a break above or a crack below to actually start to see some movement here on Apple. So we have 43 viewers over on YouTube. All right, so little by little, we have everybody joining our YouTube sessions uh, in the morning here, which is awesome. So appreciate you know you guys being here. Thank you so much. And if you are on TikTok and you're like, I wanna see the charts, man, links in the bio, go to YouTube, join the pre-market rundown session every single morning, Monday through Friday at 8.30. And at least you get more of an interactive stream. You can actually see these examples and all that good stuff. Uh, I can take a look at CEI real quick, Camber Energy. So here's the deal. CEI, if CEI finds good intraday support in this zone between 0.3639 and 0.3774, you have room up towards around 45 cents today on CEI. That'll put you into this daily support resistance zone 
as well as the 50 SMA. So if we can, again, hold that zone right here between 0.3639 and 0.3774 as support, and you put in good structure there, there's support, it's clear. You could look for a low risk entry off support, put stops right below it, and you have a good target up towards around 45 cents there on CEI. Volume is slowly creeping on in here this morning on CEI. Do we have any... Do we have any news today on CEI? I mean, that's that's the question. Do we have any news here on CEI? Let me uh, grab my news streamer real quick. I don't know where it went. There it is. So let's go look at CEI. Let's see if we have any news here on CEI. September 26th. Uh, that's just filings. Let's look at news. We got some October 4th. So Wednesday, they announced an agreement with UK distributor for VKIN ozone proprietary waste treatment system on Wednesday. And we start to notice we creep up Wednesday. A lot of that volume bleeds in on Thursday. And now we're seeing some momentum and continuation to the day. So it's just a prior day mover. We had a catalyst on Wednesday that got the spark and got the trade going. So, yeah, I would still uh, lean into that analysis since there's a catalyst here and it's not just a random mover. You do see, you know, multiple days to the upside, volume slowly increasing. So, yeah, you can definitely hold that lower zone of support. Great zone to stay above if you want to play this long up towards around 45 cents today on CEI. So someone's asking like, how did the market just drop this much? We had non-farm payroll data dropping at 8.30 this morning. And we knew that again on Monday, the type of data that we have this week. So if you're like, ah, oh, I had calls, I got destroyed, what's going on? You need to probably just be in these streams as much as, much as possible, right? Because we give you the complete overview for the day. Am I gonna take a swing trade overnight? No, why? We got Jolt's data at 8.30. Right, it's too risky, so I'm not swing trading. Right, I give you guys my game plan, market overview, full analysis, uh, to where if for any reason someone isn't calls right now, like let's take a step back. Why did you place calls? Well, I thought the market looked good to the long side. Did you know there was a key data drop in this morning? No. Well, before you take swing trades, you need to know these things, right? And so it's an opportunity to learn and grow and make improvements. All right, so again, SPY Qs, you're all set. Small caps today, maybe PRZO above that 110, 113 zone. Maybe AUVI above 37 cents support. It's got room back up to 50 and 55 cents. Okay, maybe TTOO. Again, I'm not crazy about these stocks, but if we start to see them move today and get some action, hey team, I'll definitely get you guys prepared. I'll definitely right spend some time with you guys in penny stock land small catville and make sure you guys are dialed in ready to rock and roll but right now i'd rather review some of your stocks that you have on your watch list uh, because i think some of these small caps are a little noisy right now at this point in time so any stocks that you need reviewed let's dive into it guys and if not we got about 12 minutes to go we can do a nice little open floor q a sash for the next you know five ten minutes answer some questions make sure everybody's set ready to rock and roll for today uh, but you guys know me, the main area that I'm going to be focused on today uh, and the main stock that I'm going to be focused on is, right, the SPY. Felicia, good morning. How you doing? All right, so let's do this. Let me ask you this. I got a couple comments over on YouTube saying, I can't see the charts, I can't see the screen. Well, the main reason for that is your quality setting. Make sure you're manually set to a 1080p, number one, because when I look at it over here, I can see it. Now, I can't see the prices, but I can see the zones. I can see the visual representation. I can see what I'm talking about. And I'm very verbal and very clear and accurate with my zones. Gives you an opportunity to mark them up. So yeah, you can't see the really, really teeny weeny 
little letters down here, right? Like on the scanners. I, that's intentional. Scanners are for the team, baby. I love you all. I show up and provide some value, but there are some things that I have to reserve for the team, right? But you can definitely see the charts. Uh, I can anyway. So let's just go ahead and make sure that the stream is good, right? So coming in the next week, we don't have any issues with audio, with the visuals, all that good stuff. Felicia, I'm fantastic. Thank you. I'm always fantastic when you show up. When you're here, Felicia, I feel great. You're just a wonderful person. All right. So when I'm looking for levels of, say, support resistance, are you using just the candle body or the wicks? I'm using a mixture of bodies and wicks, right? So we have prior day closes and opens, highs and lows. Those are going to be areas of potential support resistance, right? Not just one day open, but if you have multiple points at the same price, that creates a zone around highs, lows, opens, and closes. That's how I identify zones, right? Is those four points being touched multiple times over a long period of time to build conviction in that zone, in that level. Uh, can I zoom in on the spy to see the trend line? Yep, and I'm also gonna remove these two zones as well, just so you can see it clear. And I'll throw it on a 15 minute for you as well, Catherine. But I'm literally just going back into Tuesday's lows, which we connect here a little bit. Um, again, Wednesday and Thursday. And what stood out to me is you can clearly see that, that uptrend on these, these daily lows. You can see there's a trend line here. You're stair-stepping. So that's what I did, right? That's what I did. Just run off these lows, right? Connect the dots, run off the lows. And so it's regaining, right? It is regaining the trend line and that zone. And that was one of our ideas. That was a, that was a game plan, right? If we regain the trend line and that zone, I'm playing calls to 425 guys, 100%, absolutely. So if we start to pull back and hold this zone and that trend line, I'm playing calls at the start of the day, just like yesterday, guys, if we open and push into that zone of 425 and get rejected, I'm playing puts at the start of the day. Same thing applies today. We're sitting at a key make or break level. And if we see a higher low hold that trend line, which tells us we're regaining the trend line and we regain that zone and hold a support, oh, absolutely, I'll play it long, 100%. Nice tight stops, pretty good reward. But one thing that I do wanna do today, okay, is I wanna get our weekly hedge pressure level. Those weekly hedge pressure levels have been spot on. Wouldn't you guys agree with like 90% accuracy? So with that being said, I'm actually in the works of discussing a strategic partnership opportunity with the creator of this tool, right? I really wanna bring them on at least to introduce the tool, educate, and maybe some kind of unique incentive for students to where you guys get access to this tool as well. It's very accurate. I'm very impressed. But if there's a way to create some kind of strategic partnership, I wanna do that as well. It's a very valuable tool. And I'm sure there could be a lot of opportunity and education and experience and so much that we can provide to you guys here. Um, and I'm working on that actively right now. I know you guys are a little like left out. What's the tool, Josh? Let me know about it. Listen, I wanna see if there's something unique we can do for your guys as a nice little incentive. So it's win-win for everybody. Uh, but let's all be honest. How accurate are our hedge pressure levels? or bull and bear zones, the maps. I mean, I would say over the past three weeks that I've been testing this, 80 to 90% accuracy. Now, do we use these levels as standalone reasons to get in and out of trades? No, right? It's just an extra layer of confluence, but it's been a super strong, valid layer of confluence. And I tell you what, I think these hedge pressure levels, for example, they, they far beat, surpass any kind of indicator that I've ever used. So I love the tool. I'm excited to use it. Um, I'm mean, excited to get their team in here to teach you, to educate you, and to introduce this tool to you guys. The Big Daddy Russ, what's up? Good morning, sunshine. How you doing, buddy?
Uh, would that maybe be an inverse head and shoulders on the spy? Were you looking at a one minute time frame? Uh, maybe a wee one, right? So I, and I, here's a good a good thing to talk about. I was on a, on a private coaching call with a student yesterday, and we were talking about you know his strategies and his system, and we're reviewing his data and you know making data driven decisions and building his his systems and strategies out um, and everything like that. That's what we do inside Market Mastery. We really take a, a high level approach. But anyway, we were talking specifically about the head and shoulders, the inverse head and shoulders. And one thing that the student mentioned was, you know, you can see them, but you don't know if there are one. And it's like, you know, you can stretch it sometimes. It's kind of like pattern recognition, right? You're just struggling. And I'm like, if it's not crystal clear, it's not one. If the formation is not crystal clear and setting up perfectly, don't stretch it. It's not one. So let me ask you this question, Josie. Is this a perfect crystal clear inverse head and shoulders formation? And so let me give you some context. A perfect crystal clear inverse head and shoulders formation consists of a left shoulder, a head, and a right shoulder that's developing at the same exact level as the right shoulder. That is a textbook perfect crystal clear high probability inverse head and shoulders formation, especially when those shoulders are occurring at a valid key support zone. So with that being said, do we have a valid key support zone? Is this setting up perfect textbook? No. So what I would say is completely scratch it. I can see the inverse head and shoulders. I can see the left. I can see the head. I can see the right. I can see that formation. Right? I could probably go back and look at a bull flag. I see a bull flag here, right? I see an inverse head and shoulders here, right? I can see an ascending triangle, right? Like I can go find patterns all over the place. But one thing that I want to stress is traders that only trade patterns, they are not consistently profitable. I was one of those traders that traded the bull flags and the bear flags and the ascending triangle wedge breaks. And don't get me wrong, you can trade them when you have layers of confluence for example when you see that inverse head and shoulders formation occurring at one of your zones of support okay if you see that head and shoulders formation forming at your zone of resistance and you add that layer of confluence it increases the probabilities but here's the deal as well right do i trade the head and shoulders like everybody else in the world where it's wait for the neckline to crack to get sure i do not I'm getting in as the right shoulder is developing. If it's developing at the same level as the left shoulder at a key zone of support or resistance. So I trade it differently than everybody else, right? And it has to set up location wise at a key level. While other traders will just say, you know what? I think that's an inverse head and shoulders. Let's take it. But it's in between support, in between resistance at a very just random location it really just decreases the probabilities. But when you take that formation, put it at a key zone of support or resistance, and you trade it strategically, you can definitely put the odds in your favor of being successful trading patterns, okay? But you need those extra layers of confluence. They have to be crystal clear textbook, and you do trade them strategically. And when I say you trade them strategically, you don't trade them like everybody else. Right? The example was most retail traders wait for the neckline to crack before they get in. I'm getting in as that right shoulder is developing off a key support level. Reduces my risk, increases my reward, and the probabilities are a lot higher doing it that way. I love an inverse head and shoulders. I love trading that setup. I love it. When I see it, count me in but it has to consist of those other things that we just discussed for me to want to take it in the first place, right? So again, that was a good little topic, a little bit of an education here this morning for you on if it's not textbook and crystal clear, developing at a key level, it's a no-go. Just cross it off the list, regardless of what happens next, it's not a high probability setup. You want to trade only the highest probability setups. That's the goal. So I already know what I'm doing out of the gate. I'm looking for some spy calls, baby. So let's get an order type up ready to go just in case. Uh, because yeah, if we come back down and we hold this lower zone and we hold that trend line, I already said, guys, I'm getting in. Like I'm gonna be looking to get in maybe at the start of the day. If we open 
come into the zone and we hold, I'm playing some calls, guys. Nice tight stops underneath those two levels. And we have some great targets to the upside. Let's rock and roll. Let's get ready for today. Let's crush it and let's have some fun, ladies and gentlemen. Here's to an amazing fifth day of the month. You guys are crushing it. You guys are eating lately. You are on fire. So let's crush it again. You guys are absolutely just dominating this market. So let's end the week strong and profitable with capital preservation in mind. Let's not give back these weekly profits. Let's end strong. Let's end with some profits and let's have some fun while we do it. Market's going to be opened on up here in about a few seconds and we are live. Ding dong, Mr. Anthony in the house. Mr. Anthony in the house. What, what? What's up, dude? What's going on? What's crack a -lacking? Oh, we got Mr. Zacky Poo. Zoom is a big old poop emoji icon. Uh, same thing for me, man. It's it's silly. Every single day. And the other thing, too, is like when I hit stop share and I end it, it freezes on my computer. I have to go force close it. Like, what? There's always issues with Zoom. No wonder their stock's price is 60 bucks a share. Shit. I would like to see that, yeah. So that would be a few layers of confluence too, man. It's like we would be coming back into this potential little uptrend from pre-market. Not sure how valid the trend line is going to be, but I want to look at it. But the big thing is that trend line from those last three days of lows that we just got back above, and then that zone of um, support as well. So it's like I'm looking to see if the SPY can hold above this you know, 421.60-ish region as you know support. And if so, I think we could see a nice little move higher. It just really depends, though. So you're you're seeing extra layers with your EMAs as well. I, I can dig it, man. This is why uh, we're all here on this call. It's like you see a little bit more. I see something. Corey sees something. Now we have 10 layers of confluence. We're all taking that fucking trade. <laughs> What's up, Zach? And it bounced off the, the VWAP. The VWAP. I love it. So here's what I want to do. I want to get that extension back up. And we're going to start the extension from where the move started, which was that candle high from that big candle dump down to the low. We're going to run it back up to the high. And yeah, we got a 61.8 extension there. And it was respected here. It was respected here. It was the 50% respected. Yeah, kinda. 38.2 is being respected right now. You can see his resistance off that extension. So at least we could utilize that extension and just give us those additional layers that we need. But right now, it's just game of patience, waiting for the spy to come down as low as possible into that zone and to give us a reason to get in. Until then, I am hands off.
Yo, and just so you guys know as well, today's the last day that we have open enrollment for the free course. So links in the bio, if you guys want that free course, go grab it. Today's the last day we've gotten just flooded with new enrollments. And so our system's having a hard time playing catch up. So we got to shut down for a little bit and let it play catch up. But uh, yeah, go ahead and uh, go grab that course. It's free. Uh, you're going to pay $1.88 to have your account enrolled and processed and get everything set up on the back end so you're good to go. And then, um, yeah, today we're going to shut that down for a little bit and play some catch up on the back end. But, uh, yeah, it's available for you guys if you guys want it. Link's in the bio. You guys will like it. Gotten a lot of great feedback so far, so go take advantage of it. That's weird. Option time and sales. No, that's not it. Uh, option level two. There we go. Okay. I was like, that's weird. So spy and I'll trade dailies. I've been trading dailies this week. Quick little scalps. Yeah, I'll just go. I'll start with some like 423s. Faux 23s. Someone do me a favor. If you're looking at an options chain right now, because I don't have interactive brokers up, October 6th, 423 calls. What are they What are they at right now? My level two is still off. The bid ask is 140. What's up? 124. Okay. Well, so, yeah. So, okay. So, the time in sales is accurate. It's just my level two. It's the level two is it's taken a while to update this week. So, the, right now they're at 129. 131. Yep. Okay. So at least I know my, my fills have been accurate this week. So I just can't look at the, uh, the level two. I got to look at the time and sales. It's like, there's a five second, 10 second delay with the, um, the level two, which isn't, you know, it's annoying, but 121, 122. So at least I know I can watch the other uh, time and sales. I look at both. I look at both. I don't really look too much at the option time and sales in level two, but I'll reference it. I'll, I'll, take a, I'll take a peek at it, especially if I'm doing market orders in and out. It gives me an idea of was my feel, was my feel good because I market order in and out. So if I'm like, okay, the bid ask is 122 over 123 and I go market order in, I get filled at 130. I'm like, what the fuck? Why was there a seven cent discrepancy? But no, when I'm looking at, you know, like reading order flow or looking at, you know, the level two, I'll look at the, um, the stocks level two, the stocks time and sales. This is a quick scalp, if everybody understands, a quick scalp, it's risky, right? You're coming down and it could crack and dump hard. So, I mean, you got to keep those stops really, really nice and tight, but you have like five layers of confluence. But again, your stops have to be nice and tight below 421.50. Because you're trading against all the selling pressure and momentum. Yeah, you're coming down into the key support, but if it doesn't bounce and it keeps dumping, you need to get out very quickly. So all eyes on this area right here, this 421.70 area. Going to go ahead and start getting in. I'm scaling in right now. So if we can get a nice little pop, we'll start scaling out. It's a quick scalp. We're, we're talking, you know, 25 cents plus. We start scaling at 1 to 1, 2 to 1. And then uh, we can uh, go stops underneath that candle low here. But we're looking for a nice little 50 cent pop. Cost basis right now is at, where's my cost basis? Like, uh, it doesn't even show me my cost, but 108s, 108s. Not getting that bounce. 
we got to see a nice little pop here back above 422 again you got to keep those stops nice and tight because if it does not bounce it's going to keep dropping on off even more guys Yeah, that's the first loss I've taken in a while. Okay, well, I took a little bit of a loss there. I took the trade right off that level. Okay, I, I went, I sized up a little bit more than I have this entire week. The second we start cracking that level, I got out quick. So my stop was about 25 to 30 cents on the chart, but I had about 40 contracts on that trade. So I'm down 580 on the day, but it was a good trade. We had multiple layers of confluence. We came down, we had a price reaction at that level. I was willing to take it. But hopefully I stressed enough that keep your stops nice and tight. It is a bit of a riskier trade because you're trading against this momentum here. Nice, man. Look at you guys. You guys are already eating. Good stuff. What is our hedge pressure level for today? We got plenty of time for that data to be up to date. We'll go five minute time frame. Come on, load, baby, load. All right, what are we looking at today? Hedge pressure is 422.50. Johnny's out here. Johnny, Friday's your day, man. Quick little base set on the spy. You got PRZO on pre market and another little trade here out of the gate. PRZO, you're eating, man. Fridays are your days. Fridays are the days, baby. I can dig it. All right, so we just sit back and relax and wait for the next trade. Right? Small loss. Can't win them all. You just got to be, uh, you got to be patient, guys. That's it. You got to be patient. So, I mean, we're, we're, tapping that trend line we're all around that little trend line i mean that's a pretty dialed in trend line as well i don't put a lot of weight just around the trend line but it's right at that zone as well There's a lot. Yeah, you got hedge pressure, 422.50. You got trend line in that daily zone that we're trying to get back above after falling below it. Yeah, there's a lot going on right through this zone. Yeah, but the 50 is going to be the same point on the 50. Extension fib, that 50% will fall right in the middle. Yep. So today's map, the suggestion, right? Again, it, it populates a, a map as far as what's the highest probability outcome as far as direction. And right now it's a push into weekly hedge pressure and then a rejection down into monthly hedge pressure, which is like 410. That doesn't mean it's gonna get there, but that's the direction going closer to that monthly hedge pressure level. That's 407.50. So, I will be watching this 422.50 region. 
if we come on up to this 422.50 and we see, you know, maybe like this kind of price action where we come up and just tap, 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 tap it and we fail to break above it, we will be looking for some possible puts off that level for the next leg on down. So what I want to do here is I want to take an extension off today's high of day, today's low of day, and then run this extension off these intraday points and do away with the one from pre-market. I'm going to utilize this one right here, intraday. Jesus, <laughs> that's insane. $6,500 on those Tesla puts from the swing trade from yesterday. Get it, son. Get it. That's a 10 point drop overnight. Like, well done. You remind me of Catherine. I had the, uh, the net, was it Netflix or Meta? I don't even remember which one it was. It was Meta. And I waited for that one for, you know, weeks. And something happened. I don't know. I came back and I missed the trade that day. She made 22 grand on it. Yesterday, I was in ES puts, <laughs> or ES short, and I came back to look at test. I'm like, that was the trade, son of a bitch. <laughs> and you grabbed it, so congratulations on the profit. 6,500 bucks. My PayPal is uh, Josh at alphadaytrading.com, and we'll uh, we'll just we'll be we'll be fair. We'll do maybe like a 20% profit share. I think that's fair. <laughs> Joking, by the way. Corey, you got any fair value gaps here, sir? <laughs> you got some FVGZs in the house? So let's see, it's at the 23.6 extension, and it's also sitting right at that weekly hedge pressure level. Now it just really comes down to price action, guys. That's it. it, just comes down to the price action. What are we gonna do at these two levels? Are we gonna push on up and go new high a day? Are we gonna completely invalidate these two zones? I mean, we'll just see. Right now, if we look at the, um, the irrational rules, like it displays those, those rules based on the data and how the price of the stock's moving, it actually puts the SPY hovering between a, a yellow and a red. Red being irrational, hands off, doesn't make sense, yellow, hey, we're good, proceed with caution. So as long as we stay below weekly hedge pressure, we're sitting in that yellow and the direction is to the downside. But the second we started to pop above that blue line, weekly hedge pressure, that's when we saw that irrational rule set flip to red. Good morning, Matt. What's up, dude? How you doing? Oh, that sucks. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. That's just no bueno. All right, I closed that trade out real quick for a quick 480, guys. I didn't have enough time to bring the PML up on the screen. I keep putting it back because you guys always yell at me because the scanners are covered with my PL. Took the trade off hedge pressure. We had that double tap up here. We got that strong rejection, second candle retest to the penny, grabbed the entry right off weekly hedge pressure, 23.6 extension, stops over that previous one minute candle high, and I was just looking for a quick scalp on down. Took profits quick. Quick 480, I'm only down 100 bucks. Yeah, 
Ding dong. I love that sound that, that Zoom makes. Ding dong. So there's a nice little 50 cent drop there plus on the SPY. You had literally no drawdown on that trade. No drawdown, no heat. Loss was like 20 cents. You got 60, 70 cents out of it. You should be scaling out right now. Those contracts are up like 30 cents a contract. You should be, you should be trimming here. <laughs> you want to leave a runner, leave a runner, but you definitely need to start trimming. You're, you're well above a three to one here on that trade on SPY. So 50% win rate, one for two, one loss, one win, still down about a hundred bucks. It's okay. It's all righty. Yeah, those contracts are, woo, wow, from 95 cents to 130. That was a quick little rip. Oh boy, we got some profits and profits chat. Let's see what we got over here. Hey, let's go, Catherine. Woohoo, look at that, 1,500 bucks, Catherine. Nice. Uh, thank you, Josh and the team. With your help, I could do it. Never saw this much profits in trading. Really? You've never seen this much profit in trading and then you joined, what, like a couple weeks ago? That's insane. That's awesome. Really happy to see the, uh, the success there. I mean, I wouldn't be complaining up with five, six thousand dollar days consistently. I'm removing that that multi-day uptrend. I think it's just it's just too much. It's too much right now. We don't need it. It's not even really respecting it. So that's going bye bye. That zone is still a is a key zone. I mean, we can clearly see it was support. Then top end held as resistance, support. We can see that we have good price action at and around that zone. So that zone stays. Obviously, weekly hedge pressure stays. And right now, guess what we're doing on the SPY? Oh, boy, Matt's here. Of course, it's fucking wedging. <laughs> it wasn't wedging until Matt showed up. And now it's like, now we're in a wedge. <laughs> no, it, it wasn't. <laughs> He's like, yeah, it wasn't. I'm like, nope, nope. Felicia, uh, nice, 183 Tesla small account. Was that a swing trade on Tesla from yesterday? Or was that a fresh trade today? Uh, do I ever look at the VIX? Yes. DXY? Yes. Dollar index, 100%. Uh, ADSPD? No. But I do look at the VIX, the P call, DXY? Absolutely. I think we may have another short opportunity, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Yeah. Off of weekly hedge pressure and 0.3 of the downtrend inside of this wedge. Because it is a wedge and we can trade in the wedge. And we have confluence, an extra layer, 422.50 weekly hedge pressure. So if we get there, maybe another slight little bit of a trade. Get back in the green on the day. I don't, I don't want to have a red day, but if I have a red day, it's going to be a small one. I'm only down 100 bucks. So far, I mean, we have a 100% daily win rate. That's just not sustainable. That's not always going to happen, but we can mitigate risk, keep the loss small. So what am I going to do, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to scale back off the 30 to 40 contracts, back down to like a nice healthy 10 to 15. Don't take too much heat, too much risk, but be able to lock in some base hits and plus be able to let it breathe a little bit if I need to and be able to lock in just some base hits, get back in the green, and just make sure that we're ending the week strong. I mean, I'm really happy with the results from this week, and the last thing I wanna do is, you know, get a little too aggressive today or just trade too much, when I already know, statistically speaking, like Fridays are my worst trading days. Matt, best trading days. Me, the worst. Me, Mondays, those are usually my best trading days. Matt, no bueno, he doesn't even come into the market. So, Gonna cut the size back down. The reason I was risk on, because we're sitting at some pretty key levels. We had multiple layers of confluence and we pretty much got what we wanted, proper setup. So that's why I was being aggressive, but controlling the aggression. But seeing the market, decent, but not super spot on. Um, I'm just gonna cut the size back a little bit. Be a little conservative today. Uh, that was just two trades this morning. Nice, I can dig it. Yeah, Monday the banks are closed, but the markets are open. So the market will be here, which means, hey, we'll be here. But that also means if you're trading a cash account, money's not going to be settling Monday. It's going to be settling Tuesday. So you got an extra day of downtime if you're on a cash account. That only applies if you're trading um, equities, though, shares. Let's readjust that little bit of a trend line here and see if that's going to be 
the uptrends inside of this potential wedge. Monday low volume, yep. I got into a long on ES off the uh, the uptrend. Yep, running it back up to hedge pressure, and the downtrend. Stops are I think a point and a half off my entry, so got about a point on it. Just trying to see if we get a little bit of follow through. Three points, it's not bad. We're gonna go stops at break even now on this and just let it ride and see how high it how high it goes. But I'm not gonna let it stop me out. At a loss, I'm going to keep stop at break even because I want to see if there's a, any kind of follow through here. Nope, I just uh, clipped it. Uh, clipped at break even on that one. Oh, you took that one as well. Nice man. Yeah, so we had that 23.6 extension, which I'm pretty sure you saw that. Yeah. And then we had the hedge pressure. And then it just, price action was nice. That little double tap, that was a pretty nice little tap, tap, tap. Decent confirmation to grab those puts with tight stops. But that was a good trade, man. Good stuff. You still holding or you're completely out? No, I'm completely out. On that little, <laughs> the blue candle. Yeah, the, the, the up candle. Yeah, the up candle. So right now, if we just go ahead and take a step back and look left, right? What are we doing right now? We're just grinding yesterday's low of day. I mean, that's all we're doing. We got yesterday's low of day, a little bit of this zone here that we are just kind of tap, tap, tapping here at this point in time. So that's going to be an area of concern is all of that support from yesterday, that little zone we have right at yesterday's low of day. So that zone here is between 4 to 1 and 1, 18. 421.32 is an area that's trying to hold on up as some intraday supports. I'm going to take that bigger daily zone away. And I'm just going to really focus on, obviously we have hedge pressure, 422.50. It's been validated beautifully here. We took some puts on down. Nice little trade. So I'm going to keep an eye on that hedge pressure level, keeping an eye on this downtrend that we have as well. And then yesterday's low of day, that zone of support we have here. Okay. Then we just got to look left and really just go map out all of these prior lows of day as well. So like all of these prior lows, these are going to be areas of support here on the spy to where we could bounce. I mean, there is a lot of downside support right through the the entire 420 range down into the 200 sma there's a lot of lower support there could be a lot of areas where we could see the spy have decent little pops decent little bounces so here are going to be your three lower zones of support prior to getting to 420 on the dot psychological support and then that 200 sma which is at 419.76 so here are going to be your lower zones of support that the SPY is probably going to try and hold and have a little pops off of, a little bounces, right? The zone right here between 421.18 and 421.32. Below that is between 420.67 and 420.82. And then down at 420.18 to 420.30. And this is, again, just Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, low of day support zones that we've had over the past few days. We have this intraday downtrend. And we know we have hedge pressure up at 422.50. So now it's just waiting for the next best opportunity and the next best trade to come to us. But I do have a question for you guys. We are coming up into a potential 0.3 of this downtrend. Would we all agree? We have this downtrend of high a day. We drop, lower high, we drop. We could see it come back up to a 0.3 of this downtrend. Is this a valid trade off the trend line? Can you take this off 0.3 if we get there? Yes or no?
Anthony, what? Would you say? Yes. Why yes? So 0.3 of the downtrends. Is this a valid trade off the trend line for 0.3? That's the answer I was looking for. I was looking for a no, but then a follow-up. So no, we can't take 0.3 all by itself because it's not coming off of a lower low prior to 0.3. However, you made a valid point. We have an additional layer of confluence, which is a strong level of resistance, weekly hedge pressure, which does increase the probabilities just a little bit more to validate this downtrend. So. The first answer, take hedge pressure away, 0.3 of the downtrend off a double bottom? Absolutely not. It's gotta come off that lower low to be a high probability 0.3 trend line trade. But if you do have multiple layers of confluence, you are slightly re-increasing the probabilities of that trade. And it is something that you could trade. You go from 60-40 to now back to maybe a 70-30. 70% odds that we could hit that downtrend, hit that weekly hedge pressure and see a nice drop. The more the better if you have a third layer fourth fifth right you're just validating this trade even more but trend line all by itself point number three not coming off of a lower low we should not be taking those trades that third another third level of uh, confluence there man that's all we're trying to do, right? Establish as many multiple separate reasons to take a trade as possible. Not just one, ideally not just two, but three to five. The more the better. But Trader Adam, correct. Negative, Ghost Rider. No lower low before the third touch, 100%. But Mr. Trader Adam, does that extra layer of confluence make sense on how we add those extra layers of confluence to help you know, re-increase the probabilities of that you know, potential trade? Nice, Hunter, 120, Felicia, 183, starting the day strong, Catherine, 15 hundo, Rayo, uh, what, what was your profit? 65 on Tesla puts, 6,500 on Tesla puts, jeez. It's good stuff. Uh, thoughts on trading on Robinhood? I would say negative, <laughs> no. I mean, they make it really user-friendly to buy and sell options. It makes it super simple, but you don't have the tools and the data that you need uh, to take trading seriously, I would say, on, on Robinhood. If you're just gonna do some long-term buying and selling, fractional shares, like that, that's fine, but I would get set up with an actual broker. TD Ameritrade, even if you wanna go with a Weeble, Weeble is gonna be a thousand times better than something like Robinhood. So I would go with, you know, TD, Ameritrade start there or, or maybe Weeble um, if you want to take you know trading not serious but to the next level and you know just already be in a platform that you can grow into as you grow as a trader uh, right that would be nice man You got Q chopping at that daily zone. How are the small caps doing? I mean, PRZ was okay. It wasn't great. It was just okay. Small caps were kind of a bust today. Yeah, I'm still keeping an eye on Netflix. I am. It depends on how we close today, but come into next week, maybe there's something there coming into next week. The, uh, to the upside? Downside. Oh, downside. Light volume today on Netflix, though. Mm -hmm. How are those options looking on? You know, pretty, still decent, tight spreads? No, it's not that great, but I'm yeah.
<laughs> Catherine's like, I don't like Fridays either. Yeah, it's like, I look back at the data over the years and Fridays are always like 50-50. Right, when I just purely just look at Friday, I really don't make or lose anything. I, I'm usually just breaking even. I have some good Fridays and some crappy Fridays. And so it's like, I really size off. I try to. Today, the only reason I was like, you know, being aggressive and, you know, sizing up was, I mean, the opportunity we had. A lot of volatility, a lot of volume sitting at so many key levels. I'm like, yeah, this is a good trade. The market's been hot this week. I want to take advantage of it. But statistically speaking, Fridays are just subpar days for me. So. Yep, I usually am very, very, very patient. You know, I have no profits on the uh, the futures account. We're flat. Took that one trade, was up a you know a few points. Uh, got clipped at break even, sitting at zero buckarooskies there, and I'm down one hundred dollars uh, between the last two trades on the spy. And if I would have sized accordingly, like if I would have taken the same size uh, on the second trade as I would have taken on the first trade and not cut it back, you know, twenty contracts. Obviously, you clearly see that would have been a little bit more in profit, which would have surpassed the loss. Uh, but I did size down a little bit, which is why, you know, the profits were a little bit lower than the loss. So I'm not, I'm just not digging the price action. A little of this, you know, lower high, chop, chop, chop. I mean, this is technically what we call a descending triangle, technically speaking. Descending triangles, lower highs with flat bottom support. So there's a high, there's support, lower high, support, lower high, support, lower high, support. Descending triangles are intraday bearish formations, right? 80% of the time, a descending triangle will lead to a crack to the downside. However, this is one of those formations that it does the complete opposite on the higher time frame, right? On daily time frames, descending triangles typically lead to breaks to the upside. Um, so with that being said, we do have these lower highs with flat bottom support, right? And we could see a crack and a move lower as that's just the probabilities for this particular, you know, setup, this formation. Am I going to take it short just because there's a descending triangle? Negative Ghost Rider. Just pointing out what we have. <laughs> but I'm not taking the, uh, the descending triangle short. No, thank you. news or just with the overall market that's that's a pretty that's a pretty big drop man hmm <laughs> that's affecting walmart <laughs> Huh, because of that, like, hey, we have a new weight loss pill. Uh, we're not eating as much. Like, oh, okay. Huh, that's, that's interesting to see. That's interesting to see. Uh-huh. A hundred percent. That's why I broke my TV last night. I walked in and Kardashians was on. Now I got a hammer sticking to my TV. Chelsea, yeah, absolutely, 100%. And I appreciate the, the transparency, like big loss to September, 
readjusted the schedule, right? There was a lot going on, but now you're back, you're focused, you're dialed in, you're committed to being here and applying everything that you're learning in the market. And so far, you've actually had uh, three out of five days, all green. And that's absolutely amazing. So keep showing up. I'll continue to give you the input. We'll continue to support you and help point you in the right direction. Just keep applying yourself and you will get to the level of success that you want to get to. But amazing stuff. A little tap, tap, tap. You just, you just triple tap Tesla. <laughs> I can dig it though. I like it. Mm -hmm. Which what you need like a dollar on Tesla to be free trade? 50 oh, that's it. Fifty. Oh, well, you already have that. You're good. And let those zero DTEs ride to end the money, make 500%, and you're good. Yeah, with you, man, you like you snipe your entries to where, like, yeah, there's a lot of downside, but you're only risking, like, what, 25 cents? per contract got on your 30 delta so yeah you're looking at like 25 cents on the stock's chart give or take yep. yep i mean you can afford that on something like tesla if you absolutely nail the entry nail that 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 low which you did if you're waiting and you're hesitating you're like oh i don't know i'm scared oh there it goes and there you're buying it here it's like yeah no, that's no bueno can't do that So I don't know how I feel about the market right this second. How would you give uh, the SPY a rating, guys? Would you rate the SPY as like a 10, opportunity left and right? Would you rate it as a five, it's okay, or a one, like, pfft, let's just go uh, enjoy our Friday. Which I'm not leaving. I'm not saying, hey, that's a reason for me to get out of this. I'm, I'm sticking around, but I don't really see anything too much. We had two trades. The first one was a great trade that we were waiting for at the start of the day. It was a small loser. Second trade, decent winner. Since then, I haven't seen another trade set up. Two, two, five. Yeah, I was thinking right around like three to five. You know, it's just got so much lower support that we're just kind of tapping these zones. And no real sense of overall direction. There's a lot of downside support. And then there's a lot of overhead resistance. It might be a really tight trading day overall. Um, that's a great question. I mean, we're definitely trending. We can definitely see we have a, a bit of a downtrend, right? With the lower highs and the lower lows. But are we moving big enough, like swinging up and swinging down with big enough swings where I think fibs would be valid? No. Technically, we are downtrending. But would I use fibs in this kind of choppy downtrend? No, because I just don't think they would be super valid. Does that answer your question, man? Cool. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Just want to make sure. Yeah, it's just really tight. The moves, it's like you get the drop, you get the pop, drop, pop. And just really, it's tight, it's congested. Technically, it's downtrending lower highs and lower lows, but it's very tight and congested. And again, I want to see some nice, nice direction, right? I want to see we're in a clear uptrend, a clear downtrend. This is a very tight, congested little downtrend. Uh, so I wouldn't really be all that crazy about using fibs. I mean, yesterday out of the gate, like these drops and pops, drops and pops. Oh, definitely. This kind of market yesterday, we're using fibs for those retracements. Absolutely. Uh, even here on Wednesday, where you have these nice rips and pullbacks, you know, this is a good market to be utilizing fibs in. And they'll, they'll be respected. Tuesday, good market. And even some points there on Monday. But right now, comparing this kind of iffy price action, I mean, it's, it's okay. But I personally wouldn't be using fibs at this point until we get clear direction up or down and see a pretty decent move.
But here's what I'm seeing, though, is I see a long coming up, guys. What's up? It did, yeah. You know, when we were looking at 0.3 here, it would have been invalid simply because it was coming off that double bottom. We put the lower low, and then boom. There's your lower high. Pretty close to the trend line. I mean, pretty subjective. You can readjust that trend line and say, you know what? My dots were connected. And hey, they were. But I'm actually looking for a higher low break of the downtrends. I'm actually looking for a possible higher low break of this downtrend. So if we, again, we got rejected off the downtrends. If we can pull back into that initial zone of support and hold it again, that would give us a higher low that we could push off of see a break of this downtrend and get a nice retracement up to that weekly hedge pressure level of 422.50. So if we see a nice higher low push opportunity and we break this downtrend on point number four, that's a pretty good high probability setup to play long, right? I can get long in that zone of support prior to the break of the trend line. I don't wait for the breaks. I get in at those zones of support if price action looks good. Um, and then I throw my stops underneath that zone of support. So we can see here that there's a solid little, you know, four to one opportunity, you know, possibly right around the corner. If we do get this rejection, pull back into this lower zone between 421.07 and 421.21. We come on down into that zone, good price action. We're holding on up and starting to curl, starting to see that higher low. I will look to get long, stops underneath that zone, look for a break of this downtrend and see if we could ride this back up into the 422.50s. Yep, you can see that as well. You would see a you know, bigger picture, left shoulder, maybe head, right shoulder. Some traders would call this you know, the boom, boom, bang, right? But I wouldn't classify this as one of those boom, boom, bangs because it's not coming off of a rip up first before setting up like this, but more of that, that inverted head and shoulders. And it's all taking place at a pretty valid zone of support, which I like. If this was at a random location, I wouldn't be talking about this right now. But since it's going to possibly be taking place back at this very valid zone of support, I'm interested. Just comes down to letting for the market to come to me, come back down to that zone, and then just reading the price action. Trying to gauge, you know, is there, are there buyers present? Does it look good? Should we be pulling the trigger? So you you come down spy you you get your butt down here to that that zone right there So that's what I'm looking for. We're looking for possible calls down in that zone, 421.07 to 421.21. And we'll grab some 422s. 420, yeah, we'll look at the, uh, the 422s here. Not in. It's got to come down to that zone. That's where I want to see this setting up back down here. I mean, this is the technical higher low. We could start to break and run. I won't be in that trade because my risk is way too much. I want to catch the entry down here where I can have a nice tight stop and also increase my uh, reward on the trade at the same time. So come on down to the price is right. And the price is right, right around the low 421s. Yes, this is a one minute time frame that I'm looking at. This is a one minute time frame. And so if you're looking at, you know, like an ES trade, right? Every 10 cents the SPY is about a point on ES. 
So if you get in with about 20-ish cents of risk, 25 cents of risk on SPY, you're, you're talking about two to three points over on ES as far as risk. That's about how close they, they move together. Every 10 cents on the SPY is roughly about a point over on ES. And you do have well over a dollar of upside, which is you know potentially 10 points on ES. You could already see you're setting up a nice little three to one, four to one. Just depends on what are we gonna do? Are we gonna come down and tap, tap, tap? Start to see a nice little push? If so, I'm, I'm ready to get in. I wanna see a nice little double tap, right? See, double tap, little double tap, not just a single tap, I wanna see that double tap. A DT before the break of the DT. Everybody's like, what? Yeah, I want to see a DT before the break of the DT. I'm like, okay. Don't know what that means, but let's do it. So again, I'm not in. I'm completely flat. I will let you know when I'm getting in. We need that, in my opinion, double tap confirmation. Come down and see it hold and react at that lower level. See the next candle open. Also have a nice little reaction here at that lower level. Then I'm definitely willing to jump on in. It could be the nice little double tap. 421 support, lower zone. Still just waiting and watching. I want to see how this candle moves around the zone. Again, I'm still not in. Completely flat. We could technically bring that zone down a smidge. That's a nice little uh, nice little candle there. I'm gonna start 10 contracts here. I like how we came down to the lower zone and now we're starting to flip green on this candle back in the zone. So I'm gonna jump in with uh, just 10 to start. That's all I grabbed was 10 contracts at 94 cents a contract. I only got 10, but I only wanted to go 10 or 20 anyway. I pulled the trigger right when the SPY started to uh, flip green on that candle came down to the lower zone hit it really strong push flip green jumped in and now we're seeing a nice little profitable trade already up pretty nice let's start scaling out a little bit we're just i'm taking two at a time I only got 10 contracts i'm just going to scale out a little bit here take two it's a really nice 60 cent push like that you, you guys got to get paid so we're just kind of trimming here a little bit still in eight of the 10 contracts took two Right now we're seeing about 180 in profit on only 10 contracts. That's a really nice profit on 10 contracts. In the 170s, going to take two more. There we go. Nice. Fuck yeah. That's the trade of the day, baby. Taking a little bit more here and see if we can hold a little bit of a runner. Why am I not just leaving a runner? Dude, I tell you what, man. When I leave runners, my runners always get clipped. It's like clockwork. I'm not a big fan of runners. So if we fall back below 421.75, I'm closing it and taking my profit because I don't enjoy runners getting clipped 80% of the time. And these contracts went up 30 cents a contract. So I mean, might as well take the profit. Okay, I'm out. I, I went ahead and took it. Such a light size too. Only got 10 to the 20 contracts, but we got 244 on the trade on literally 10 contracts. Uh, we caught that for a really solid like 80 cent move to the upside. And it's exactly what we wanted to see. Took a lot of heat, which we weren't in, but we saw some drawdown here into that lower level. But as soon as we started to see buyers buying this back up, that candle flipped green. We're starting to see that possible little double tap, right? Double tap, push, double tap, push. There's your double tap. There's your push. Scaling out, taking profit. You guys may get full target at 422.50. Job well done. Good trade there, guys. That's what I'm talking about. At least someone got to run around the table. Uh, wow, those contracts just went up 60%. Well done, man. You're, you're there. Start, start trimming. Ooh, get it, son. Get it. That's two for two on the day, baby. There it is. There's your target. There's your one and done trade of the day. About time. That was the, the best setup of the day, and I'm glad that it set up properly. We got the trade. It worked. I mean, 
well above our expectations. A full dollar fifty to the upside. Well done. What's up, bro? Fuck yeah, that's what I'm, that's trading right there, dude. I love it. Dude, for grabbing puts, into support, closing, flipping calls, because that was a killer setup, bang, bang, baby. That's, that's some good shit, dude. Right there. So, I mean, that was good confirmation to close puts, and you already knew I was coming into this trade with a long mindset. And we had a lot of separate reasons to get that long. So great way to take your profits and say, you know what? That is a long. Let's take that long as well. <laughs> what? That's two trades. You went short, then long within a 10-minute time span. Hell, yeah, man. You feel pretty good about that, don't you? What happened, man? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> so don't look at it right, because right, it's a SIM account. You're like, how does that make sense? The thing was up 50 cents. Those contracts were higher than my, my cost basis. That SIM account's just taking a while to update. Uh, do, it's the intentions behind the trade. Just, just again, screenshot the trade, the entry, the stop, the target. What was the delta? How many contracts did you have? So we can do that calculation to see what that trade would have really been profit wise now how many contracts do you have like 10 five. five contracts and you took two when it popped up 50 cents yeah. okay so you got 30 bucks on the two probably if it was a 30 delta 30 ish bucks you took another two when like right here So like right here. So you were in down here below 421 and you took pretty much all your profit at like 421.60 ish. If we had to find an average. So you got 50 to 60 cents on a 30 delta five contract. So you made truly on that trade, maybe 80 to hundred bucks. If it was like accurate fills. Yeah, yeah man. And five contracts, so good stuff, man. And that's a pretty good profit. I mean, really good profit, you know, on just five contracts. So, and we saw what 10 contracts did on that trade because I took it for a little bit more, right? I did take some profits into the trend line, but I did hold a little bit through that break, but I was closing out pretty quick. So yeah, that would make sense. You know, 80 to 100 bucks, that would make a lot of sense. Good job, man. Nice, Kevin. First trade, 116 loss. Second trade, 189 win. Looks like you took both of those trades with me, uh, which is okay. I don't want you to get into a habit of mirror trading, but as you're learning, you know, that's okay to, to follow along. But I always still recommend that you follow along, right, in a simulated account. Never mirror trade with real money. It doesn't work. Uh, but yeah, first trade, we took a loss together. Took the second trade. Nice winner. Even said, you know, I need a size down today. I don't want to give my money back this week. I want to size down. Next best trade, took 10 contracts, 244. We got a whopping 140 on the day. But it's okay. We are off to a great start in October. Um, this will put me up a little over 2K this week on just the options account. That's not even factoring in the IRA swing trade from last week into this week. A crazy swing trade on that account. And then the futures account. I mean, we've been rocking this week, guys. I mean, this market is on freaking fire. And you guys have been throwing profits up like crazy. <laughs> like, good stuff. Another 160 on Tesla. You know, Kevin locking in some profits. Who else grabbed the trade down here on the SPY? I'm curious. And then next question I have is, who doesn't understand that trade on the SPY? Is there anybody that's like, I don't understand why he took that trade. What was the confirmation? Like, whoa, what's going on here? If you don't understand it, I'll explain it. But if everything makes sense, then it makes sense. We move on to the next opportunity. 
Johnny grabs some profits there on the spy. Well done. I like your guys' uh, high-level discipline, though. Josie, you missed it. Bounced too fast, didn't want to chase. Good stuff. Same thing, Cole. You hesitated, didn't want to chase. I like it. I like it that you guys are like, you know what? The opportunity is missed. I can't chase it, right? Good habits, good discipline, good work. Had a great first week. Thank you, Josh, and the team for all the help. Brought my $500 account to over 1000 bucks in your first week here. Woo, you're halfway there to getting an ROI, man. Like, let's go. Good stuff, Kevin. Way to crush it. Tyler on YouTube for free stream Friday. Got 10 of the spy calls at 68 cents. You're up substantially, dude. Tyler's eating right now over on YouTube for free on free stream Friday. Jeez. We do too much, don't we? Well, I mean, you said it, not me. So if anybody heard that, it might be time to utilize some of those gains to come into the group, according to Zach. He, he, will, uh, he will sponsor you guys, by the way. <laughs> You're like, I didn't say that, okay? Should we do some crazy 5C insane incentive for the day? Should we do that, guys? Or should I be like, nah, it's not worth it. <laughs> he goes, give me that profit sharing PayPal again. I'd rather you come in to the community and actually learn how to do this on a day-to-day -day basis consistently. That would mean more to me than just 10% of your money. I'm not going to do that. No. But no, seriously, though, uh, we'll, we'll ask members inside the chat. I usually do this every now and then. We have good days, and we're doing free stream Fridays, and things are going well. And usually it's every time we do these, things go well. Uh, but yeah. Uh, maybe we do some crazy five seats, you know, for the next, you know, two hours and we do some kind of discount. We'll let the team decide. It's up to them. I don't make those executive decisions. I just coach you guys. That's it. So now we sit back and wait. It's 1030. We're an hour in. We start wrapping it up right around 11 on Fridays, especially with a banking holiday on Monday. Things may slow down a little bit more towards the end of the day. I don't know. But we do start usually wrapping our Fridays up around <clears throat> 11 o'clock. So we've got 30 minutes to go. Uh, can I break down this? What's up? Oh, you're, you're eating right now. There's your runner, baby. You got free trade within like, what, three minutes? Pff, no, like three, se three seconds. <laughs> Good stuff, man. Ooh, that's a nice little hundo percent. I can dig it. Yeah, those contracts that we were grabbing there for 90 some cents on that move, they're at 230 now. <laughs> but again, man, I can't tell you, like when I hold runners and I've tried to hold runners for weeks, I'm like, you know, I'm gonna go the next two weeks and just do nothing but runners. They all get clipped. The second I stop holding runners, they all run. And I'm like, okay, then it's just, there's no in between. There's no happy median. It's just, I take my profits when I have them and I just move on. Uh, but yeah, dude, can I break down the spy trade? I would love to break down that spy trade. So it consisted of really just two things. Um, number one, we had the downtrends, okay? Number one, and we can see that it was a valid trend line. High a day, we dropped, lower high, we dropped, then it actually came up for a 0.3 rejection. We actually had Anthony take that put. I was actually just waiting for a 0.3 rejection to see if we would pull back into this initial support zone, right? We had a lot of support here intraday. A lot of support here intraday. Tons of support here intraday. We cracked that level of support. But what did we do once we cracked that level of support? We snapped back above it instantaneously into 0.3 of the downtrend. So now all I'm looking to see is 0.3 going to be validated. 
if point three is validated and we get rejected where could we pull back to back into that level of support and if we see that level of support hold that would give us what a higher low what can we do off that higher low push and if we push what could happen we could break the downtrend on point four off of a higher low one of my favorite setups right especially when you crack support snap back above it put in a higher low you push and you also have a downtrend to break at the same time on point four this is like my go-to trading setup i love these trades and so that was the reason behind the trade looking for entries back down at that zone of support right not when it breaks the trend line but as it's putting in that higher low so how did I gauge an entry, right? You could have taken this at a break of the trend line and that would have been just fine. But why was I getting in off the higher low? Well, there's a couple of reasons why I wanted to get on that higher low. If I get in right here at a break of the trend line, my stop should technically go underneath the prior swing low. So what does that do? It gives me a little bit of risk, quite a bit of risk actually. But if I can actually get in at this higher low strategically, guess what happens? My risk is nice and tight. And if I reduce my risk, I increase my reward. So how do I gauge the entry, right? How am I confidently taking that trade, essentially anticipating that this is gonna happen, right? We didn't know this was gonna happen, right? I'm anticipating that being a higher low, pushing and breaking the trend line, right? Based on the experience, I've seen this setup a thousand times. I know the good ones from the bad ones. I'm 80% confident this has great potential to play out. But what was the deciding factor for me to pull the trigger? And I said it a few times, the double tap, come down into that zone, quick little double tap, show that it's gonna hold a support, right? Come down, little bounce, bounce action, show that it's gonna hold a support, come on down, hold that level, not just a one candle retest, but let it come down and actually prove to me that level's gonna hold. So we come down into this level on this red candle and we saw it fluctuating. We saw there was a price reaction there. So we see that, hey, there's price action. It's reacting, right? There are buyers present, okay? But that's not enough for me to get in. Why? Well, I wanna see it actually hold two candles, at least, minimum. That's my reasoning. That's what I'm looking for to take that trade. Then we saw it come all the way down. I'm like, I'm glad I'm not in that trade. This thing could dump. But what happened shortly after we hit this lower zone of support? We saw buyers step in. They bought that candle all the way back up and it happened aggressively. We saw buyers stepping on in. Look at the time in sales. The order flow was sexy. You saw buyers eating that move right back up. That's price action. Sellers push it down and buyers say, yeah, not gonna happen. That's the start of that little double tap. So as soon as that red candle got bought up quickly and started to flip green, that was confirmation for me that this is probably gonna be that quick little double tap we're looking for. So I felt confident to get in here, put stops underneath that candle lower shadow, knowing I have room up into the trend line and then a possible break of the trend line into weekly hedge pressure. So I already know my entry compared to my stop, risk is nice and tight. Reward, at least three X, right? And then potentially four to five X into weekly hedge pressure. So from the trade, being right here to what could we see? If we see this setup, how do we trade it, right? What kind of confirmation do we need? What are we looking for? How do we place our entries? Where do our stops go? And how are we looking to scale out of this trade with price targets? So that was the before, the during, the after. The reason for the trade, what we were thinking could take place just based on, again, how the market's developing, how this was setting up. And again, I've seen this setup thousands of times, I feel like. And I know the good setups from the bad setups. And that one candle right here getting bought back up flipping green was confirmation for me to go ahead and take that trade off support and ride that sucker up for a break of that downtrend to hedge pressure. Now, did I take it all the way up into that weekly hedge pressure level? No, I was getting out right around this 422 level. But Anthony took it all the way up to the hedge pressure level, so that's good. You still holding the runner or are you completely out, Anthony? Right at hedge pressure. Hopefully that's recorded. Yeah, it's recorded. Yeah, you guys have been yelling at me the last couple of days. Record all this shit. Well, you know what? I've recorded everything today. You're welcome. Fuck 
for. <laughs> now that wasn't recorded. Yeah, that's worked for you this week, man. You've had some, even yesterday. Even yesterday, man, you had uh, those put runners from that trade, and you wrote them all the way down to pretty much low a day. Off the low? Good shit, man. You've had a really good week this week, too. I think we've all had a pretty good week. Who hasn't really had a good week? I mean, raise your hand if you're like, yeah, this wasn't a good week. Let's talk about it. Because the market has been packed full of opportunity. Even if you're not making money, this is an oper this is a market to learn in, for sure. Scott, completely out not holding over on YouTube. Great morning. Awesome, man. Well, thank you for being here on Free Stream Friday, and I'm glad you're able to take that quality trade with us and make a couple uh, couple bucks. You got Tyler still holding some runners as well. He's eating right now. He was buying those contracts at 68 cents. Those contracts right now are over three dollars. No, they're not. I'm looking at 422s. 423s right now. We're closing in on two bucks. I mean, you're well over 100 percent, man. Nearly 150 on that trade, so. Good work there, boss. So, no one in chat answered the question about, hey, should we do some kind of five seat massive incentive? No one said anything, so I gave today's not the day. So y'all will just have to see me next Friday. But if you wanna work with us every single day, you guys know where to find us. Okay, so I would like to get some feedback. Who have been trading at home? You guys, who have been trading at home a long time? I have consistently been logging on my trades for the past three weeks. I have noticed I am not good at trading pre-market or after 11 a.m. I also noticed I am much better at one to two setups. So now I'm working on being disciplined, only trading during that time frame and only those setups. That's smart, it's perfect. Been in the green for three weeks, paper trading, dope. Also noticed I'm better trading ES rather than MES. I can dig it. I plan on continuing paper trading a bit longer. Any thoughts or advice for me moving forward? So what I would say is you've had three weeks, I think you said been in the green for three weeks paper trading, right? And the reason that you've been green for three weeks paper trading is because you took the initiative and you started to log the trades just by yourself and journal and, and look at the data and say, okay, where am I really excelling? What are the setups? What are the strategies? And you even went a step further, like what times of the day, right? Do I actually see results and success? And you already know from 9.30 to 11 is your trading time, right? You already know there's a few setups that you'll trade and hey, you've got it dialed down to only trading the ES. So my recommendation moving forward is just to do that consistently week over week. That's it, just keep doing that consistently week over week over week. And when you feel confident, when you feel more confident than you are today, that's going to be when you think about going back into a, a real account. I would just say stick with it, stay consistent, right? Keep putting in that hard work that you've been, you know, really putting in. Uh, Kevin, yeah, it's so much better not looking back to see what could have been. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I could have made 150% on that trade. Yeah, I could have been up two grand on the day. I'm up a hundred bucks, but I don't care. I'm gonna log this, you know, trading day. We had one, two, three trades, 144. That 144 puts me over uh, the 2K threshold on this account. I mean, I've definitely hit my goal. I've, I think I've exceeded my goal between my three accounts. Um, so I'm, I'm stoked. I'm happy with this week. I'm not even gonna trade the rest of the month. I'm, I'm done. We're good. No, I'm kidding. i be here next week. If anybody else has any insight, feel free, but I would just say continue to uh, just rinse and repeat, you know, week over week. Do what? Oh, like, yeah, man. Hell yeah. Do you trade puts and calls or do you ever do spreads? I don't trade spreads. I just go long calls and puts. I trade shares and I will trade futures as well.
So I think now is a good time for just Q and A, guys. And you know, wrap up the Friday strong. We're profitable. We had a couple really great trades back to back. Uh, we're coming into 11 o'clock. Things will start slowing down. And so if you guys have any questions whatsoever, get those posted up inside of chat. More than happy to help you guys out, get those answered, and make sure you're ending the week very strong. Zach got some profits today. I like it. Following that system, following that plan from yesterday, I can dig it. Uh, 264 from the Sizzler. Nice, man. Three wins, one loss, 75% win rate. Loss was nice and small, too. Killing it. Some good numbers today, man. And those were all longs? Oh, long call, long put. I gotcha. I'm going to give Zach some love with those emojis. I'm going to give him a, a dollar sign, a little blue heart. Give him a cucumber. Some fire. Some eyeballs. Yeah. Uh, do I have a moment to address? Huh? Inspiring to it's inspiring to be Anthony? Um, inspiring to be Anthony. Oh. <laughs> well, he's got 30 days of a head start on you, man. He's got 30 days of a head start. And so, yeah, man, like I tell, I told you, Anthony kind of set the bar. If you're going to look up, you're looking up at Anthony, and you're like, okay, what did this motherfucker do? Let me follow his lead. Um, yeah, and like he's got 30 days on you too, man. Like 30 days is a, is a game changer, Zach. It's like we even said yesterday, like next week, like just one week of replicating, then we're going to start start really making uh, some progress, moving the needle, man. Oh, with you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it does help, man. And then those calls with Chris on Monday, man, those are super valuable calls. I hear those calls have been going really good. So Chris is holding it down. Yeah, yeah, clearly. And yeah, we noticed that a couple days. <laughs> uh, yeah, Kevin. So addressing the risk of two to three percent on such a small account because you're because uh, I am double to maybe quadruple that risk. I mean, that's just the golden rule: is you should not risk more than two to three percent of your account on a single trade. So that means if you have a one thousand dollar account. Your maximum risk on a trade should not exceed twenty to thirty dollars, and so you may be like, "Well, that doesn't. That means I can't make a lot of money." Well, the point is to make sure you're consistent with risk management. Like, you know, yeah, you have a small account, but that doesn't mean you can go ten percent risk. It's not realistic when you have a thirty thousand dollar account, right? You need to make sure that you're trading a small account, medium account, large account, that the parameters are dialed in, right? Uh, two to three percent max risk on your trade is the golden rule. Um, I prefer to be right around one to two personally. Like when I was on my smaller account, yeah, I'll go three percent risk. I want to grow that account, so I'll risk a little bit more. But again, I can grow that account a little bit faster. Growing the account's the hard part, because like I said, if you're doing two to three percent risk on your trade, twenty to thirty bucks, and you're hitting two to one setups, it means you're making sixty bucks maybe on a trade. You can see it's gonna take a while to get that account off the ground, but once it gets off the ground and you have more buying power and you learn how to properly scale your trades, then it just starts compounding a lot faster. And then you start getting to those bigger days, which again, compound a lot faster to have more capital to maybe scale a little bit more. But you have to be super just dialed in and consistent with that two to 3%. 3% is the max, right? And when I trade my small account, that's the max. When have we ever done a small account challenge? It's 3% max. Whenever I trade my larger account, 3%, it just, it's still a little too much of a dollar amount risk for me. So I scale back to like maybe half of a percent or 1%. I could go 3%, but I don't have to go 3%, right? It's outside of my tolerance for risk, right? And so that's something you may notice is as the account grows, you may start to notice that you're sizing down a bit, not even sizing down, but you're taking less risk per trade from a percentage standpoint. Maybe you find yourself around 2%, 1%, but again, 3% is the max that you can risk on any given trade. And that percentage is based on your account. So if you're risking six to 9%, you're being way too aggressive, right? One trade and managed incorrectly, for example, could completely wipe you out.
Uh, was there another course you were mentioning earlier? Um, I don't think so, was I? Maybe I mentioned um, the Market Mastery program, but I don't know about a course. So where are we at if I refuse to do this right now? Well, I mean, you're your own person. You got to do what you want to do. Um, I would just have to say out of tough love, I think that is a terrible decision to say, ah, screw it. I'm going to go 10% risk. I mean, that's not how you're going to get to the level of success you want to get to. You're just going to do yourself more harm long term, personally, by building bad habits. But at the end of the day, you're your own person. You're going to do what you want to do. I can't force you to do anything. I'm just going to try and guide you and steer you in the right direction. And we've had members do that before, do their own thing. Eventually they start to listen and they start to see results. So if you need to learn that way, which some people do, some people need to go, you know, fuck it, I'm gonna do what I wanna do. Learn the hard way and then be like, you know what, I'm gonna start paying attention and listening. I think it's silly personally to be risking more than 3% of your account, regardless of how little or big the account is. I think you gotta build good habits and establish discipline. So that's my two cents.